Smartcast. You're listening to a Hindustan Times production brought to you by HD Smartcast. Hello. These are the top news for the day. The Delhi Government's Directorate of Information and Publicity, DIP, has issued a notice to the ruling Aam Aadmi Party, AAP, for the recovery of 163.62 crore spent on advertisements allegedly in violation of the Supreme Court guidelines issued in 2015. It warned the AAP headquarters can also be sealed if the party does not deposit the money within 10 days. The notice, a copy of which Height has seen, relates to money spent on advertisements mostly published outside Delhi. It was issued on Wednesday days after Delhi's Lieutenant Governor Vinay Kumar Saxena on December 20th directed Delhi Chief Secretary Naresh Kumar to recover 97 crore the AAP spent on advertisements in violation of the guidelines. An official, who spoke on condition of anonymity, said legal action that could involve attachment of party properties would be taken as per Saxena's order. The 163.62 crore includes the principal amount of 99.31 crore till March 2017 and interest of 64.31 crore. Saxena's order cited the findings of a union government appointed three member panel which in September 2016 concluded the Delhi government was guilty of misusing taxpayers money on advertisements. The panel said the ruling up should reimburse the funds. North India must brace for another cold wave beginning Saturday with temperatures in the plains set to dip as low as minus 4 degrees Celsius a weather expert predicted Thursday warning of a extreme spell of cold weather which will peak between January 16th and 18th Nadeep Dahia the founder of an online weather platform called Live Weather of India tweeted never seen temperature on sombal going this low in a prediction model so far in my career Don't know how to put this up but upcoming spell of cold wave in India look really extreme during January the 14th to the 19th with peak on 16th 18th freezing minus 4 degrees celsius to plus 2 degrees celsius in plains wow the here however said fog could play a role in this prediction model adding that maximum temperatures too could drop to single digits if such weather conditions continue still have 3 days with minor plus slash this is going to happen fog will play a crucial role in moderating night temperatures but if it lasts long single digit maximum temperatures will be there very interesting days ahead he said january 2023 can be historically coldest maybe for 21st century so far parts of north and northwestern india have already been blanketed by bone chilling cold and dense fog this winter with a minimum temperature of 1.9 degrees recorded at delhi's siftarjan weather station earlier this week there was however some respite for the national capital today with siftarjan recording an overnight minimum of 9.3 degrees developing countries should join hands to redesign global political and financial governance to ensure they are not excluded from development and can remove inequalities prime minister narendra modi said on thursday as he hosted a virtual summit of leaders of the global south the voice of global south summit a new initiative of the indian government months after it took on the presidency of the g20 brought together the leaders of bangladesh cambodia guyana mozambique mongolia Papua New Guinea, Senegal, Thailand, Uzbekistan, and Vietnam. The Indian leadership has emphasized that it will act as the representative of the Global South during its G20 presidency. Modi, in his televised opening remarks, said most of the challenges facing the world, such as climate change and the Ukraine conflict, were not been created by the Global South, and yet the developing countries were also excluded from finding solutions to such problems. People of Global South should no longer be excluded from the fruits of development. Together, we must attempt to redesign global political and financial governance. This can remove inequalities, enlarge opportunities, support growth, and spread progress and prosperity, he said. The World Health Organization has warned against prescribing two India-made cough syrups for children after they were linked to the death of 19 children in that country last month. The WHO said the substandard medical products, both made by Noida-based Marion Biotech, are products that fail to meet quality standards or specifications and are therefore out of specification. 
In a medical product alert issued Wednesday, the substandard medical products were identified as Ambronol and Doc1 Max. The WHO said, the stated manufacturer of both is Marion Biotech Private Limited. To date, manufacturer has not provided guarantees to WHO on safety and quality of these products. Marion Biotech has been battling controversy since news of the deaths emerged and did not immediately respond to Reuters' request for a comment. On Monday Uttar Pradesh's Drugs Licensing and Controlling Authority suspended its manufacturing license, people in the know told Hindustan Times. Officials said the company had failed to respond to a show cause notice served on December 30, they had been given seven days to reply. Production of all medicines at the plant had already been stopped per a directive by Union Health Minister Minsukhan Awiya. With a rehabilitation package being prepared by the Uttarakhand government, as Joshi Mitt looks to stymie the crisis of its gradual sinking, environment expert Wim Lane Ujha said the town has been brought down by NTPC engineers as there is no scope of repair and no reverse gear from the present situation. Putting the blame squarely on NTPC which claimed that the tunnel for their Heidel project is not passing under Joshi Mutt, Jha said the Joshi Mutt disaster is the result of aquifer breaches. Joshi Mutt disaster is the result of puncturing of aquifers by the NTPC engineers, by their tunnel boring machines, through tunneling under Joshi Mutt, muddy waters seeping out from homes and ground is a testimony of the engineered crime leading to aquifer breaches, Jha wrote in a long Twitter thread breaking down the catastrophe. Citing the example of the Chamoli flash flood which took place in February 2021, the environment expert said that it was at the same project site and a clear example of Himalayan ecological vulnerability. Irrespective of political parties, the authorities are in a mad rush to maximize short-term gains, mostly for private companies and contractors, Jha said. You were listening to the HD Daily News Wrap. A beta production brought to you by HD Smartcast. Please give us feedback on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook at HD Smartcast or via email to podcasts at hindustantimes.com. Until next time. This was a Hindustan Times production brought to you by HD Smartcast. HD Smartcast